Good morning, guys. Um, as promised, I'm going to give you a video to sort of help guide you through the remainder of your paper. Before I do that, I'm simply going to give just a brief overview of what we talked about in class, just to sort of refresh your memory um, about those things. <coughs> If this is my Monday, Wednesday class, uh, looking at this video or listening to this video, um, you guys may want to start here uh, because we didn't really get this far in our class. On the Tuesday and Thursday class, again, this is just going to be a short review. So um, for writing the visual analysis essay, the first thing you want to do is to write your introduction, right? Uh, these documents that I am looking at on screen, you can find in the course module. I'm going to make sure that all three of them are uploaded with this audio so that you could just click and download and you'll have access to each one of them. If I were you, I would have my document open at the same time that I'm listening to this video, right? <clears throat> the introduction you can do uh, or you can begin your introduction one of five different ways, right? So each one of these examples gives you one of those five different ways that your first sentence can um, start with, right? You can either start with a startling fact, a thought-provoking question, a meaningful quotation about your topic, or a universal idea or statement about your topic, or you could start with a rich, vivid description about your topic. Right? This pertains to the very first sentence of your introduction. Right? So the first thing you need to do is make a decision on which of these five ways you're going to begin. I think for me, the easiest one is always number four, because you're just making a statement about your topic. Okay? <clears throat> After you make this statement, the remainder of your introduction paragraph is going to be this section here, this B section. Now you need to provide essential background information, right? So whatever your hook is, in, and the hook is usually your first sentence. So you look at your universal statement, and then you're going to connect that universal statement to the background information that you want to present about your visual. These are some questions to consider when trying to figure out what background information you're going to include in your intro, right? You could talk about what the visual represents. You could talk about the purpose, why it was created. You could even give some background information about the organization that's funding this ad or this commercial or this visual. And you could talk about what the goal or the importance of that organization is. You could even give interesting facts about the organization. All of these things here are going to help you build up to your thesis statement, okay? So your intro has the very first sentence is going to be one of these five ways. I'm going to focus on number four, so I'm going to make a universal statement. After that universal statement, I'm going to provide some essential background information about the visual or my topic, right? I'm going to do these three th two things. And then at the end of my introductory paragraph, I'm going to write my thesis statement. My thesis statement is simply going to identify the argument the image makes, and it's going to identify the tools used to make that argument. It's very simple. What argument is the ad making? What tools help make that argument, right? That is what your thesis is made up of. Here is a sample introductory paragraph. Again, the yellow part starts with a universal statement. The green part gives the background information. And then the red part is the thesis statement. I would tell you to look over this introduction and then you're gonna fashion your own introduction after this one. Make sure you follow these steps exactly. You begin with a universal statement about the topic then you introduce the background information. This green part is going to require you to do some research over your topic or your product or whatever it is that is in your visual that you are trying to introduce. If it's the company or organization that's making the ad, you're going to have to look up some background information on those on that particular company. And then you're going to include a bit of a good bit of background information about the company, 
but make sure that the information that you're including ties back to your universal statement. Okay? From your universal statement, you're going to lead into your thesis statement. When you're writing your thesis statement, use this template that's here. All you're going to do is change out the information that doesn't pertain to your ad, and you're going to add in the things that do. So let's say if your ad is using logos, pathos, and ethos, then you're just going to add logos here. This advertisement uses logos, ethos, and pathos. And whatever rhetorical elements your ad focuses on with using logos, pathos, and ethos, you can add it here, developed primarily through dialogue, symbols, and visually pleasing aesthetics. If yours is text, dialogue, and symbols, then you would just put it there. And then here is where you're going to tell what the actual message of the statement is, right? So what is the purpose for using ethos and pathos, right? You're going to say that this ad is used to, yes, sell a product, but it's also used to convey a message. For the sample that I'm using, I'm saying that the message is that they are offering an interpretation of the qualities of an ideal man. That is what I believe the overall message of this ad does. It sells a product, but it also helps to define what an ideal man is, okay? I put that into my thesis statement and I have an introductory paragraph. This intro is going to be anywhere from 150 to about 275 or 300 words. Okay. You can actually highlight this um, in Word and copy and paste it and you can see about how many words are there. Okay. So that's the first step for writing your intro. After your intro, your next paragraph will be to describe the visual. Okay. We went over this in class, um, in my Tuesday and Thursday class. Okay. So to describe the visual, you're going to look at the objects that are in it, identified, including the actor. You're going to describe the commercial or the visual in depth. You're going to describe everything that you see there. You're not going to analyze it yet. Okay, So no analysis. You're simply stating everything that is pertained in this visual. You can tell um, with all of the boxes, I'm just going through and pointing out everything that's included in this description. Now, my visual that I focused on was a commercial. So you know that the commercial is about a minute and five or 10 seconds. So my descriptive paragraph is gonna be quite lengthy. If you have a visual, yours may not require all of these words here. But what you want to do is make sure that you describe every inch of that visual, right? And you're going to make sure that you use academic language and you're going to use complete sentences, okay? When you're trying to figure out how to describe what is said, the dialogue, then go to this example and look at how I put the dialogue there, okay? This is an example of how you would write about dialogue. If you're trying to describe describe um, the actual objects, right? Then go to look at where I'm describing the objects, right? And you're going to just mimic that and you're going to do the same thing for your essay or your descriptive paragraph. Here I'm describing the text, the font size. Go down here. If your visual has text and font size and you're about to describe it, then you go to this part of the paragraph and you look at how I did it. And then you're just going to mimic that as well. Okay? So that is going to be your second paragraph. So the first paragraph is an introduction. Looks like this. Second paragraph is going to be your descriptive paragraph. Third paragraph is where you address the audience. Okay? Who is the target audience? We spent some time in class talking about audience. Explicit and implicit audience. To get an idea of how you would introduce the audience for your visual, you simply look at this one. Again, um, for this one, you can make comments about maybe why this particular audience has been chosen. You could talk about the effect of that. I would simply read through this paragraph several different times, right? Read through it 
two, three, four times. And then when I'm starting to write my own paragraph on audience, I would make sure that I'm using the same references and adding sort of the same information that's introduced in this paragraph. Okay. Once you have your paragraph on audience written, that should make up the first three paragraphs of your essay. You'll have your intro, you're going to have your descriptive paragraph, and then you're going to have your paragraph on audience. Okay. Those first three paragraphs, you have not started to analyze this visual at all. The second half of your paper is where you're going to actually start to analyze your visual. And that's going to happen after you've written your audience paragraph. Okay. Now, once you've written your paragraph on audience, the next thing to focus on is the body of your essay. The body portion of your essay is going to be the largest portion and the most important part because this is where you're going to start to actually analyze the image. Typically, a body paragraph will have three paragraphs depending on how long your paper is. For a paper that's about 1,250 to 1,500 words, you're going to have about six to seven paragraphs in total which means you'll end up having maybe anywhere from two to six body paragraphs, depending on how much you want to say um, about your visual. Uh, the first three paragraphs for us was the intro, the description, and then the audience paragraph, right? So you will probably have about three additional paragraphs to finish out this essay or for depending on how many rhetorical uh, appeals you're going to write over, right? The body of your essay is mainly dictated by the thesis statement, okay? Your thesis statement is what tells me how the body of your paper is going to be organized. If you look at the thesis statement that I included from that introductory paragraph, this is the thesis statement, right? It says, this advertisement uses ethos and pathos, developed primarily through dialogue, symbols, and visually pleasing aesthetics. That's basically imagery, okay? And then it's going to make a claim, which is to sell the product, but also to offer an interpretation of the qualities of an ideal man, okay? So the body of my paper is going to explain in one paragraph, how ethos by itself, how ethos uses one or two or all three of these things in order to do this, to offer an interpretation of the qualities of an ideal man and to sell this product, okay? That is the purpose of your body paragraphs, whatever you state in your thesis, okay? So I have my thesis. And my thesis is going to tell me that my first body paragraph is going to be over ethos because that's the first rhetorical element that I mentioned. Okay. The structure of a body paragraph follows this five set structure. The first sentence is always a topic sentence. The second sentences or few sentences usually introduce evidence. The third sentence usually explains that evidence. The third, fourth, or fifth sentence usually explains that evidence. The sentences that come after that explanation is to provide even more evidence and then explain that evidence. And then the last sentence of your, bo of your bo body paragraph is going to make a final connection that basically re- refers back to the claim that you made in the first sentence, okay? The sample paragraph that I uploaded here on ethos, basically I took that paragraph apart and I put it into each of these sections so that you could have an idea of what each of these things looks like, okay? So a topic sentence has to make a claim about the strategy used, okay? 
It's going to talk about the device used to appeal to the audience, to expose a flaw, to um, expose, expose an occasion, to establish the speaker, to introduce a claim, to develop logic, or to address an opposition. For my body paragraph, I chose to say that ethos is used to introduce this former NFL athlete, which is a symbol, okay? And then I say that the introduction of this athlete is again used to play on the idea of masculinity and to also get people to buy their product. Now, if you look at my claim and then you go back to my thesis statement, my claim basically reinforces what I said in my thesis. It just uses different words, right? Here I said to sell a product. Here I put to buy their product. Here I said um, to interpret the qualities of an ideal man. Here in the topic sentence, I was more specific. I said play on the idea of masculinity. Same thing. I'm just using different words so that my essay is not repetitive, but I'm focused on not on ethos and pathos, but I'm focused only on ethos for this paragraph. I'm not going to talk about pathos. I'm not going to talk about logos in this paragraph. I am only focused on ethos, right? Because that is what my topic sentence said. So after I have this topic sentence, the ad uses ethos in the form of a former NFL athlete for what purpose? To strengthen the company's argument to buy their product and to play on the idea of masculinity, right? That's my explanation for why the ethos is used. Now I have to give you evidence because when I make an interpretation, an interpretation is different from an opinion because an interpretation is backed up by evidence. So here I'm going to provide textual evidence from the visual, right? I make a statement. Athletes tend to be strong, fierce, aggressive, and successful. And Isaiah Mustafa is a retired professional athlete who still has that stereotypical physique and demeanor, right? So I said they're using an athlete to strengthen the argument and playing on the idea of masculinity. Here, I'm going to provide an example of how. So I'm going to actually name this athlete, give you his name, and I'm going to tell you what masculinity he is exuding, okay? So here's my evidence. Now, after you introduce the evidence, you have to then go in and explain and discuss that evidence and link it to the strategy of ethos. Remember, ethos refers to a person's reputation. So I need to explain how the reputation of Isaiah Mustafa makes someone want to buy this product and how does the reputation of Isaiah Mustafa also um, give an example of what masculinity is. This I'm going to do in my explanation part, this part here. Okay? It says, this immediately connects the reputation of the actor to the reputation of the product, seemingly suggesting that the characteristic the actor embodies is a result of his use of the body wash. I'm explaining how using him is ethos and how that ethos is used to get people to buy this and how it's used to determine this, right? I say this idea is reinforced when the actor explicitly states that if the viewer's man stopped using Lady Senate body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me, right? Remember, go back to my thesis statement. I said that the ethos was established through dialogue and symbols and visually pleasing aesthetics. When I go in and I start to discuss this dialogue, I'm doing exactly what I said I was gonna do in my thesis. I'm showing how ethos is determined through the use of dialogue, and Isaiah Mustafa is the symbol, so that's there, and the visually pleasing aesthetics is me talking about his physical demeanor, okay? So I'm doing exactly what I said I was going to do in my thesis for ethos in this body paragraph, okay? So for instance, if you say that in your visual, ethos is established through text and through colors, 
then down here, when you're explaining and giving examples, you're going to have to give an example of the text and the colors. And then you're going to have to explain why that particular text and those colors are important and how they add to the reputation of whatever symbol or ethical um, connection you've made to your visual. Right? A paragraph is very structured. It does not have extraneous information and everything is connected and linked to whatever you said in your topic sentence, right? I would not be discussing colors or anything here because that's not what I put in my topic sentence or my thesis. I did not mention colors, right? Here, if I wanted to, I can kind of associate it with visually pleasing aesthetics. I could make that leap if I wanted to, but I don't really need to. Okay? For your paper, you may need to. The next thing I'm going to do after I do this is I'm going to do number two and three all over again. Right? I'm going to provide more textual evidence, and then I'm going to advance the idea or explain it. Right? So I go again. Furthermore, the subliminal messages regarding the accepted view of masculinity are also on display. The actions and the speak of the actor exude strength and confidence, which is evidenced by his tone and straightforward manner and the straightforward manner in which he directs the female audience. He stares directly into the camera with an upright posture and in a smooth yet direct tone instructs women to, again, I'm focusing on dialogue, because that's what I said in my thesis up here. Look at your man. Now back at me. Now back at your man. Now back at me. Right? Now I'm going to explain why this line was effective. The commanding voice and tone plays on the perceived notion of what it means to be a strong, to be a man, strong, assertive, and confident. Okay? Again, every time I'm explaining the ad, I am explaining this or this, right? How those things relate to this or this. And these two things directly go to support my thesis, which says this, okay? So your body paragraphs are only used to support your thesis. Your body paragraphs should not mention anything that's not out, that is outside of your thesis statement. Whatever your thesis statement says, your body paragraphs have to Prove, right so if you think of your thesis as an inter as an interpretation you're going to make a claim or an interpretation and then the body paragraphs are going to prove that your interpretation is correct right that is the way you need to look at the body paragraphs now um when you finish with your evidence right for me i only put two pieces of evidence here if you wanted to put more you're simply going to repeat number four. You're going to add another piece of evidence and then you're going to explain it and connect it back to your topic sentence, which connects back to your thesis. Okay. At the end of every body paragraph, though, you have to have a final sentence that ties up that paragraph. You do not ever end your paragraph with just explaining or giving textual information. Your body paragraph, every single body paragraph that you have has to end with a purpose statement or a final connection, okay? Usually, it's going to refer back to what you put in your first topic sentence, but it's just going to use different words, right? So I'm going to say, through the use of Mustafa as an ethical appeal, so instead of saying the ad uses ethos, I'm going to be a bit more specific. All right now here I said the ad uses ethos in the form of an NFL athlete. I'm going to basically say the same thing. I'm just using different words. Through the use of Mustafa as an ethical appeal. Okay? That's the same thing as me saying this first topic sentence. Um, then I'm going to basically say these things over again, but I'm just going to be more specific. All right? Instead of so broad. The advertisement seeks, seeks to link the Old Spice brand. Instead of saying their product here, I'm very specific. I'm going to say what the product is, the Old Spice brand. And here, to play on the ideal of masculinity, I'm just going to explain how, right? With the masculinity and reputation of this professional former football player, 
to make an alluring appeal that women should purchase this product for men and men should use this product to make themselves more physically appealing to women. All right. So I'm basically giving an example of what I mean when I say play on the idea of masculinity. Down here, I'm just being more specific. That is this sentence here. It's saying this, but it's just saying this in a more specific way. Okay? And then the paragraph, when you put it all together, will look like this. This is about 318 words. If you're trying to meet your word count and you're falling short of your word count, the easiest way to extend your word count is to go back up to your body paragraph and you're just going to add another piece of evidence at number four, right? If I added another piece of evidence and explained it from my visual, I could probably get this paragraph to about 400, about 400 words, right? So you got to pay attention to your word count but you also have to pay attention to the structure of your paragraph. This is the way to write a paragraph on ethos. For pathos, I do not have an example paragraph on pathos, but you're gonna do the same thing for pathos. So instead of your topic sentence being about ethos, the next body paragraph, once you finish the one on ethos, you're gonna start a brand new body paragraph, and now you're gonna show how pathos does the same thing that you said ethos did, right? So now I'm dealing with emotions and I'm just going to use the emotional aspect of the ad and I'm going to analyze it, but I'm going to put it in the same structure. Here, I'm going to say the use of pathos, pathos, and then I'm going to identify what the pathos is. Is it using humor? What type of emotions is it using? Is it appealing to our desire to um, uh, want things, a desire to to want to be rich, a desire to want a lavish lifestyle. Those are all emotional appeals that this ad is making, our appeal to money, right? And so I'm going to say in my topic sentence that the ad uses, uses pathos in order to appeal to um, the audience's desire for uh, a lavish lifestyle. And I'm going to say it does that through humor and, again, symbols. Right? Because in the video, he's holding a, a handful of diamonds at one point. And I'm going to say that those diamonds represent a lavish lifestyle. He's also sitting on the back of a horse. Um, those things represent uh, people of the upper class and people who have money. Right, And so that's what I would do if I had written uh, a paragraph on pathos. But either way, if you're writing on logos, pathos, or ethos, your body paragraph is going to follow this structure, okay? Once you have your two or three body paragraphs, depending on what you put up here, again, remember I told you you should have at least two. You cannot have only one. So you're either going to have ethos and pathos, ethos and logos, pathos and logos, or you'll have ethos, pathos, and logos, right? You're going to simply write another body paragraph. So at this point, after you finish writing your body paragraphs based off of your thesis, you should have five paragraphs at this point. You should have your intro. You should have your descriptive paragraph. You should have your paragraph on audience. And then you should have two body paragraphs on either ethos, pathos, or logos, right? Ethos, pathos, or logos. Five paragraphs so far. Once you've finished um, your body and you don't have any other appeal to write over you're going to move to the conclusion right your conclusion is going to be one paragraph and your conclusion does these three things okay? a conclusion is going to paraphrase your thesis right that's what the first sentence is going to do it gives you some advice here. When doing this, you should briefly analyze how the author or the visual has achieved their intention. Remember, I said they're trying to sell a product and they're trying to tell you what it means to be masculine, right? Your first sentence should explain how the visual does that, right? And you're simply restating your thesis. What I don't want you to do 
ever in a conclusion is to introduce any new information or new points that you did not make in the body of your paper. If you didn't make this point in the body, don't put it in the conclusion. Okay. Here it says, through the effective reliance on reputation and emotions. Again, that is ethos and pathos. But I don't use the words ethos and pathos because I don't want to be repetitive. Okay. I said, this ad convinces. Again, it says, analyze if they've achieved their intentions. So my thing is this ad convinces this audience to not only believe that this product will enhance their hygiene, but that it will also improve their perception within their intimate relationships, right? It's going to make them more manly, which is more appealing to the woman, okay? So that is what this first sentence does. The second sentence then is going to highlight your main ideas for the analysis. This is where you go back over all the stuff that you put in the ethos and the pathos, right? So I'm going to say it's the symbolic use of a well-known physically attractive athlete who exudes confidence and speaks with assertion and power successfully plays on the audience's desire to embody the same characteristics and thus simultaneously connects the use of the company's product as a conduit, right? A conduit just means the way that you're going to achieve this thing, okay? So that's what I say in my second sentence. I'm basically summarizing my use of ethos and pathos. And then the very last sentence, you're going to close with a final thought, right? Um, here, you can make this as powerful as you want. You can make just a final analysis about the success of the ad or whatever, right? Here, I put, by managing the rhetorical appeals, the advertisement makes a powerful commentary on masculinity and directly ties its achievement to the use of their body wash. And I end there. It doesn't have to be rocket science and it doesn't have to be overly flowery, right? It just needs to do a job. This is the concluding paragraph written out. It's about 103 words. The conclusion should be anywhere from 100 to 150 words. So that is the structure of your essay. If you're following this structure, again, you should have about anywhere from six to seven paragraphs in total. Okay? The first three paragraphs, your intro, your description, your audience paragraph. The last three or four paragraphs will either be ethos, pathos, and logos, and then your conclusion. Remember, if you're not doing all three, ethos, pathos, and logos, you just don't do a paragraph on that, and then your essay should have six body paragraphs, okay? If you have any questions about anything, let me know. Please make sure to look at this video or listen to this audio over and over and over until you get a clear understanding of what your paper entails.